Hey Fey and Fiends, welcome back to Karma Crafts. Finished with our Vermin Prince of Darkness, we move on to making a place of horror for him to reside. This is my first diorama and first big terrain build. I don't have many supplies for that side of the hobby, so for the structure we'll be using dollar store, foam board, and cardstock. To begin, using the size of Kritza, I drew out a rough template on printer paper. Some of these pieces weren't quite the right size, but I just adjusted and cut again. That's the benefit of cheap supplies. Mistakes aren't costly. I place the template, trace, and cut, but if you're having trouble keeping your pieces on the foam, many have luck pasting their templates down with stick glue. You should be able to peel the template pieces up when you're done. When cutting this type of foam board, it's very easy to get rough, jagged edges. It likes to shred more than it likes to cut. To avoid this, use a new sharp blade for your box cutter or X-Acto knife and use a few light cuts to get through the foam. You're more likely to shred the edges if you try to get the cut done in one than you will if you aim for three or so. Always cut against a ruler for straight edges and try your best to cut straight down. It can be very easy to cut as slant, which will make your pieces harder to put together. You'll need an X-Acto knife for curved or small cuts. Honestly, I wasn't able to keep the edges totally clear on curved cuts, but my X-Acto may not have been as sharp as I needed. For the archway cut, make sure to keep the extra pieces since it's now the exact size we need for the door. The roof ended up being problematic in foam since I don't have a good way to cut at a precise edge to angle two pieces together. Instead, I decided to cut a piece of cardstock folded in half and paste strips of cardstock that are slightly bent down the middle to use for the top as shingles. For the tops of the walls and the accent around the ground, I wanted the edges beveled. Hot wire tables are great for that kind of accent since you can set the wire at an angle, but I don't have one of those, so I had to do it by hand. To eyeball the bevel, I slowly cut at a tilt, going from a guideline I drew to the opposite corner. This wasn't perfect and some parts ended up being deeper than others, but for rough honed stone, it worked fine and it turned out lovely. If you have gaps between your stones like I do, cut the gaps after the bevel. There's no way to cut the bevel if you've cut the gaps first. One of foam board's disadvantages is it doesn't like to take texture well, but again, it's just fine for stone. You can carve brickwork using a pencil or a toothpick and roll over it with a tinfoil ball to get a good rough texture. Omitting the brickwork but using the tinfoil ball is a great way to make plaster texture as well. Doing something elaborate like these doors is much more tricky. Like cutting, you just have to be gentle and patient. I absolutely ripped and punctured the foam trying to get this texture deep enough to show, but with enough repeat pressure, it turned out. You can also choose a more additive approach and cut details out of cardstock like I did with the center diamond and the hinges that I add later. Once all the pieces are cut and textured, it's time to glue. I use a combination of hot glue and PVA glue. Hot glue is good for things that need to stick fast, but it leaves a bit of thickness in the process. PVA was my go-to for anything I wanted to stick absolutely flat, but it takes time to dry. It's important to think about what type is going to serve you best. I used hot glue because I was impatient a few times and ended up having to peel the glue off and switch to PVA. Here I also had to figure out how to do the columns. Foam board is about 1 8 of an inch thick, making it quite too thin for convincing columns. I'll show you what I came to, but I'd recommend buying a thicker foam if you're making columns. While it worked out, I have a lot of seams on the back side of my project. That's fine for a diorama viewed from the front, but not so much for a piece of scattered terrain that will be seen from all around. To make measurements easier, I decided the width of each column would be equal to three times the thickness of the foam board. Three pieces glued together would make a square. However, if I pasted three pieces together, one of the viewable sides would have a ton of seams. About here, I realized I also needed a gap for the walls since they're already glued, done, and square. So, after some trial and error, I went with one strip of 3 eighths, two strips of 2 eighths, and one strip of 1 eighth width for each column. This gives you a pretty good column with a gap to fit the walls in. The caps of these ended up being a problem too. 
Originally I tried to carve them, but it was ugly and horrible. To hide the change in material, I cut four triangles of foam board at a diagonal and pasted them at the base of each side. This allows the accents to be more or less flush with the column walls, making caps look integrated into the walls instead of floating on top like a dunce's cap. The floor and the back wall are also foam board since, again, that's all I had. The floor was just two pieces of foam board pasted together, one carved with an organic sloping line and some stairs for the pathway. The stairs I carved by cutting the foam in half and cutting a gap out. I wanted to add a red carpet to the stone path. Kritza is extra. He needs that flair of over-the-top indulgence. For the carpet, I used shop towels. You can use paper towels, but the texture is going to be less like fabric. Cut it into a strip and dip in a mixture of glue and water. Line it up as you wish and make sure to push in a few places for wrinkles. I also shredded the sides and made a few holes by scraping it with my fingernail. The trickiest part was making it so I could pull Kritz's stand out of the diorama, but the carpet would still match up. I wanted to be able to still use Kritza on the tabletop. I ended up just tracing the stand, cutting the shape from the carpet, and repasting the carpet down, manually doing my best to have the carpet on the diorama and the stand match up. Using the oval scrap I'd cut out of foam to give the stand room, I made matching stones. I cut them individually, but I really should have just textured them on. It ended up being kind of awkward, and the small bricks on the side didn't want to stay, but I made it work. Paste the circle carpet back on, and Kritz's stand is ready. It doesn't look great at this point. Very much carved of foam, but... I'm going for a moonlit scene, so I base paint everything in a mix of black paint with a drop of blue and glue. The glue is to harden and protect the foam. It takes a few coats, but soon I have a nice, rich black across the diorama, except for the back wall. I was originally going to paint a scene, but I'm running low on time and kinda enjoy the streaky shadows look. For the doors and roofs, I tint the paint brown so that the building isn't so monotonous. Highlighting the church vestibule is easy. Just dry brush using a mix of medium gray with a touch of blue. Working from the top down causes a natural gradient. The topmost stones will end up being brighter than those against the ground, which is a beautiful effect for a creepy scene. Go back and touch up edges that you'd like to pop with a lighter color. Repeat these steps on the roofs and door only with browns instead of gray. The scene's coming together, but it's still kind of dull. That means it's time to turf! To continue the theme of ostentation, I made some candles to line the path. They're just a string of green stuff cut into a variety of lengths. Then use fairly big dollops of hot glue to place them in the scene and make it look like they're sitting in a puddle of melted wax. Or they will when we go back and paint it. Then, back to the cheap supplies, I used dehydrated old coffee grounds and aquarium gravel from a decommissioned tank to drop dirt and rocks across the scene. I base the area with glue first, then sprinkle as needed. You'll notice the turf is very much the wrong color. This will get corrected in a second painting pass. Old tea and coffee dehydrated in a low temperature oven make great cheap turf and let you reuse and recycle. I did end up buying moss, but you can often find this in the floral section of your dollar store. I wanted to integrate the church better into the scene and having gangly old vines draping around the stonework to the ground really helped. And the one I bought was this nice deep green, so no need to touch it up with paint either. If at this point anything feels like it's loose, go over your scene with a spray bottle of water and glue. It'll help make everything real solid for the next step. Happy with the scene, but not so much the color. I went over everything with black spray paint. Be careful, as spray paint can melt foam, though the base coat of paint and glue really helps against the melting. A few light coats in the color of the tea and coffee are brought down to, to a properly gloomy shade. Now, I don't want a lot of color in this scene since it is supposed to be night and I want proper attention kept on Kritza. So like the church before, I dry brush highlights across the turf, especially in places where I think light would hit. 
If you feel you lost some color, dry brush in browns and greens to keep up the visual interest. Now, finally for the red carpet. I paint the entire thing, though let my paint naturally run out towards the open doors of the church and the ends of the carpet where it has deteriorated. The inside of the church needs to remain as dark as possible to create the illusion of space. Paint down the sides of the carpet in a deep brown in thin stripes, then highlight with yellows on the top sides of wrinkles and long flat spaces, up to a white yellow in small areas, to make golden trim. While we have the yellow white ready, dry brush across the candles in the same way as the church, with the brightest spots at top and you'll end up with translucent looking candles. Feeling the scene was still a little dull, I finished it off by quickly making a pumpkin patch with green stuff and moss, added some candlesticks to the entrance, and added some fluffier turf I purchased to add some needed volume. I also added a wave of rats coming from the church by pasting two rat swarms that you get in a box from WizKids on top of each other. Get the final rats in place, and it is, at long last, complete. Thanks so much for watching. This was a huge project to take on with no terrain experience. But if you never tackle a project because it's daunting, you'll never know what you're missing. This was incredibly fun, and I intend to make more dioramas in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment below. Even a tiny little hello helps out that damned algorithm. Besides, I'd love to get to know who's lurking out there. Well, that's all for today. As always, take care and have fun. Don't touch that.